guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, this channel is all about worm composting experiments, different kinds of worms and different kind of bins. Now this bin in particular is my DIY bin that I made from three 10 gallon or 38 liter um, bins. And oh my God, that's a centipede. Uh, that's a big one bigger than I want to handle with my bare hands. So we all know how bad that's got to be. Get, get in there. They're not, I don't think they're good for the worms. Pretty sure. Um, anyway, sidetracked. This bin is three 10 gallon or 38 liter um, bins that have holes drilled in the bottom so the worms can come and go. Originally it was the third layer was supposed to be like a sump for the liquid, but the worms got down there, so I thought, can't beat them, join them. So now we have worms on all three layers. Last time, 30 days ago, we reset the whole bin. And so let's see what two and a half pounds of my Red Wiggler mix, which is Red Wigglers, Blue Worms, and European Nightcrawlers, let's see what they can do in a month. This was all brand new bedding 30 days ago. Look at that. You know, a lot of people get kind of per uh, perturbed about having, you know, getting a mix of worms and not getting pure red wigglers or pure European night crawlers. But look what they've done in 30 days. Um, especially in the warm weather, you know, this, uh, what is, what is called like an Uncle Jim's mix. And I, I think it didn't start out trying to be a mix of all kinds of worms, but that just happens sometimes. But I personally don't mind. Um, so I think they do a great job as a mix of worms. I have some bins that are pure red wigglers and pure European night crawlers. Um, and I think these worms do just as well, if not better. So let's have a look and see what they are doing. Last feeding was avocado and um, banana, I think. So I'm kind of scraping off things here to see what's going on. Looks like this avocado wants to grow. But if you guys follow my um, posts, I already have like six or seven avocado trees. And, you know, there's got to be a limit uh, for what I've got to overwinter in my basement. So no more avocados. Sorry, guys. I'm just going to, the worms are going to have to take care of you. Um, but the... Uh, the avocado shells with absolutely no meat on it sometimes aren't the biggest draw. I, I notice that these bigger ones don't have the draw that the uh, small Haas avocados do um, for whatever reason. But as you can see, we have a worm ball inside this little avocado shell. So it looks like most of the food that we gave them is done. Looks like they're getting into the seeds. I don't see any remnants of the boy dang it stronger than i know um i don't see any remnants other than the super long-term food so i'm gonna take these pits and put them in the bottom so that they can have the very very wet conditions so that they can be consumed all right we'll crumble that up a little bit so first we're going to do the evaluation and then oh here's the banana stem Yep, I knew it would be there somewhere. That can go in the bottom with the rest of the long-term food. All right, 30 days. Can you believe it? 30 days. And that is what they've done to brand new cardboard and paper. Amazing. It's a little dry, so we'll add water once we get ready to feed. We're going to evaluate the second level down now. Okay, level two. We didn't put any worms down here 30 days ago. All we did was put the bedding. In fact, we didn't even put any food. And this was paper bedding, not coconut coir. So look what these worms have done in a month. They are amazing critters. This bin is one of my most productive. It seems to cycle very quickly, and I don't know if it's uh, the layers or if it is, you know, what it is about it. The worms can separate and move around more, and it makes them happy so they eat more. I'm not sure. Put your thoughts below. Why is why is this particular bin cycling faster than my other bins of approximately the same size? 
Okay, let's look at the bottom layer. Okay, so the only worms that were down here were the ones that were kind of stuck to the edges uh, when we did the harvest. And it was super wet harvest, so that part went on top of blue. Now it looks like this is not as worked through um, for whatever reason. Um, you would think the bottom layer would be much more worked through. Oh man, this is one of the big ones. Ah. All right, uh, we'll leave it in here for right now, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to resist growing an avocado tree from something this big. All right, because so those are the uh, big, huge avocados that I order from Florida. Not affiliated, but if you're in an area that only gets Haas avocados like I am, I could maybe use another mango tree. What do you think? I know. I mean, they call, I call the channel Plant Obsessed for a reason. I mean, it's all about worms, but the worms are all about the plants. Ah, all right, we'll put you guys together and think about that. So looking down here, we do have more worms than we started out with a month ago. So I am going to call that, you know, a really good migration of all of the, the worms. They do flow through up and down, even though the hole to this is only a sixteenth of an inch. So I think maybe the smaller worms come down here and to get away from the bigger worms or they just kind of are the only ones you can fit. I don't know. So let's put the avocado pits down here and uh, then we will restack and then feed them up. All right, guys, if you're liking this video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. Oops, that big avocado is causing a bump still. All right, I'm, I'm going to move this over here so you can see how small the holes are, or actually, you can't see them. But that right there at the tip of my finger is the hole that goes down into there. And that's like tip of a pen, a fine tip pen. That's how big the hole is. All right, we are back on the top bin now. And I think we fed over here that time. Let's uh, move things over and get them some food for today. I don't think I need any new bedding. I'll just kind of gather up some of this drier stuff and put it on the bottom as a base for the feeding. This is some really gnarly food. It is, was supposed to be a feeding last week and the bin didn't need feeding. So it's been down here for a week in a Ziploc bag. Anyway, we've got some peppers and a bunch of other stuff that is unidentifiable after uh, eight days in a basement that is 82 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're gonna cover that up. There is already um, grit in my, my bin here. That looks like an onion peel. Uh, there's already grit in with the bedding, so I don't need to add more grit for these guys. But I am going to cover that up. You know, I said I wasn't going to put more bedding in here, but now I am. Because I really feel as though that needs to be buried really, 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 really good. Alright. I do run my bins pretty high. Uh, it's just, you know, it's just a thing. Um, some people do it little by little. I tend to uh, have my bins more full from the beginning and let them kind of digest it over time. So if you liked this video and you want to see more about the DIY bin, I have a playlist right over here. If you want to see what I did last time when I did the light harvest of this entire bin where I harvested seven gallons of castings, I will link that video right over there. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.